<laughs> what his life would amount to. Now all of a sudden, he has dreams that God is really going to change the world. And so, so for him, um, Jesus was going to save the world. In, in fact, we hear these words from Jesus in John 6, 40. He says, this is what my father wants, that anyone who sees the son and trusts who he is and what he does and then aligns with him will enter into real life, eternal life. My part is to put them on their feet, Jesus said, alive and whole at the completion of time. Now, see, here's the thing, is, is that Peter now is, is starting to realize Jesus is much more than just a good teacher. And, and, and so now here he realized that, that he gets to be part of the, living, of the winning team. In fact, there was a day when Jesus asked Peter, he said, what about you? He asked, who do you say I am? And Simon Peter answered, you are the Messiah, the son of the living God. And Jesus replied, blessed are you, Simon, that was his birth name, son of Jonah, for this was not revealed to you by flesh and blood, but by my Father in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter. And on this rock, I will build my church, and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. So, so now Peter, is, he's on this winning team. Things are on a roll, and that's kind of what it feels like sometimes, right? We come to church, and it's Easter, and it's exciting, and it's fun, and the band is knocking it off. Knocking it off? That wasn't what I wanted to say. <laughs> knocking it out the park. That's what I wanted to say. There you go. Second hour, a little too much sugar. Okay, we're good. <laughs> Knock out the part. And, and so it's great to be a follower of Jesus. And, and so here's the thing. Peter thinks, what could ever get in the way of this? Well, then it happened, right? Things got a little tougher. The heat got a little higher. And, and, and now all of a sudden, being a follower of Jesus is kind of unsafe. Um, it, it, it's, it's a little scary because you're not the most popular kids in the room anymore. And, and, and so much so that the people who, uh, whose uh, jobs were threatened by Jesus, the, the religious elite, um, decided it was time to put an end to it. And, and, and so they brought up mock charges. You know the story. They brought up the charges, and they took him to be crucified. Now, what happened to the rest of the team? Well, well, here's the thing, is that while they're waiting for Jesus to go to trial, what happens with Peter? You know what happens, right? Peter betrays Jesus three times. Three times. They say, hey, aren't you a follower of Jesus? No, I never knew him. Aren't you a follower of Jesus? I never heard of the man. Aren't you a follower of Jesus? No. I didn't know him. And the rooster crows just as Jesus predicted. And Peter knew. He blew it. He blew it. He let Jesus down. I mean, game over. He's benched. And, and, and now, all of a sudden, all, all these dreams, all these hopes are shattered. In a moment, as Peter realizes that his Lord is going to be killed, and that's going to be the end of the story, or so he thinks. And, and so you imagine at, at this point, Peter is, is pretty much convinced that he will never be a part of God's team again. You see, I, I think a lot of us feel that way too. We make mistakes, we screw up, we don't do things the right way, and we think that's it, we're done, we're never going to be accepted by God ever again, but, but that's not the end of the story. And that's why we celebrate today. Because what happens next um, is incredible, because you think this is the end, that's what they thought. And then this is what we, we find happens next. It says, when the Sabbath was over, and obviously everyone's dreams are crushed, Peter has gone into hiding because he just thinks he's never going to be good enough again. And when the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene, mother, the Mary of James and Salome, brought spices so they might go to anoint Jesus' body. Very early on the first day of the week, just after sunrise, they are on their way to the tomb, and they ask each other, who will roll the stone away from the entrance of the tomb? And that's a great question, isn't it? I mean, now what? Who's going to roll away the stone that holds Jesus in darkness? Who will roll away the stone that holds our own hearts in darkness? Because it seems like an impossible task. In, in, in fact, we feel like we're trapped. I, I, I love that last song they sang. I, I asked them for the lyrics because it, it, it says so much to me. And, and there's this one part in the song, I don't know if you caught it. It says, all at once I came alive, this beating heart, these open eyes, the grave let go. The darkness should have known you're still rolling stones. Do I, do I? I don't know if I could do that part. Um, and then a little later, I heard the power and now I believe it. 
You see, um, Jesus isn't dead. Now, now, it's interesting to me that the first person who hear that are the women, right? Who could be entrusted with this message? Well, it certainly wasn't the men at the time, right? <laughs> and, and, and so notice that the first people who hear this good news are the women, right? Now, as a staff, we've been talking a lot about this lately, um, and, and um, we decided that after Easter, we said, what's the series we want to follow up after Easter with? Um, I know Mick's going to be preaching next week, and then in two weeks, we're going to start this whole series on women, right? We, we were going to call it a woman's place. Yeah, yeah. That, that is, and, and then we were going to call it um, uh, dangerous women. And then Rachel Porter said, I think we should call it man down. <laughs> I, I think that's going to be the title of this next series. Is, so, so I don't know. So I, hope, I do hope you come back, back because um, there is a place for everyone in God's kingdom. And that's the point of the story. Hope comes back to life. Jesus does it. He rolls back the stone and he does the impossible. Listen to what happens next. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe sitting on the right side and they were alarmed. That's the understatement of the year. Don't be alarmed, he said. You are looking for Jesus the Nazarene who is crucified. He has risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him. But go tell his disciples. Now, here's the part that God always surprises me. Every time I read the scripture, something new. But this has caught me this time. Go tell his disciples and Peter. Isn't that interesting? Go tell his disciples and Peter. He is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him just as he told you. Now, now doesn't that strike you as, as fascinating? That he, he, the angel is instructed by God himself to say these words, and that particularly he doesn't just say, hey, go just tell everybody. He says, go tell his disciples and Peter. I don't think that's a coincidence. Because you see, I think Peter thought it was over. He was never to be included on the Lord's team again. It was over. He was never going to be worthy enough. He had blown it. And, and I think that's the way a lot of us feel. We will never be acceptable enough for God. And if nothing else, this story tells us that's just not true. You know, when I was in high school, um, which has been a few years now, um, <laughs> why are you laughing? No, no, but <laughs> um, when I was in high school, there was a girl our school, her name was Lori, and Lori was in a wheelchair, um, and Lori, I, I'm not even sure what, what she had, but she couldn't talk real well, it was very slow, and it was very hard to understand, um, and her hands were kind of like this, so she was always holding her hands like this. And I remember she'd sit in her wheelchair, and they'd wheel her out of class, and we'd all eat lunch, and she would always be sitting by herself. Um, and that just bothered me. It just bothered me. And, and so one day, I, I did. I went up to her, and I said, hey, let's you and I be friends. Um, and so Lori became my friend, and, and uh, the, the thing about it is, is that I, you know, I, I wanted to help her be as free from her chair as possible. So I would take her wheelchair down the halls of high school, and I would recklessly roll her every which way, and she'd just throw her head back, and she'd be laughing and laughing and laughing, and we'd almost run people down. And one day I hit a bump, and she goes flying out of the chair. I thought, great, I just killed her. You know, I was like, oh my gosh. And you know, and I'm watching, and she's just on the ground, and she's not going anywhere, obviously. And I'm thinking, and all I can think is, what am I gonna tell my mom? Mom, I killed a girl in school today. She was in a wheelchair. I threw her out. You know, I was like, oh, man. So I go, <laughs> I go over, and I, are you okay? And I kind of get her turned over, and she's just laughing hysterically. <laughs> she just thinks, so I pick her up. She wasn't very heavy. I pick her up. Um, not that long after that, we were um, all playing um, softball at school. And for some reason, they brought Lori out to PE. I, I'm still not sure why, because she couldn't participate, but she liked being there. And so she was there, and I got to be the captain of one team, and there's a guy in the captain of another team, and I had a, a co-coach, and uh, he's telling me who I should pick, and I, so first pick, I say, I pick Lori. And he looks at me, he says, what are you doing? I said, she's our new coach, you're fired, okay? <laughs> Leadership at an early age, there you go. And, uh, um, and I remember that when we graduated, she was, uh, she was there uh, in her chair with her cap and gown. Uh, and she came up to me, and um, she said, uh, thank you. Thank you for choosing me. And 
him and accepting me and treating me like a person, which is pretty basic, right? And, and I think of Peter. I think of Peter who thought he would never be chosen. He would never be good enough. He would never be acceptable. And you see, this is how God works. This is how God works. And to, 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 uh, all the things. I think Jesus had a few things on his plate right now, right? But of all the things, he says this. He says, go to his disciples and Peter. And Peter. I mean, who gets to be included in this great news? Well, Peter was included in the good news of the resurrection. I, I mean, are you sure, Lord? Are you sure? I mean, this is Peter. Peter who denied Jesus. Peter who didn't think God would ever want him again. Peter who didn't think he had a right to be included with the faithful followers of Christ. Peter who didn't believe he would have a hopeful future. He shouldn't have. He really shouldn't have. He didn't deserve it. And that's the whole point. Here's the point. How often do you feel the same? You who believes you are not good enough for God. You who is convinced God doesn't know your name. You who doesn't believe that Jesus' death and resurrection is for you. You see, this is the great invitation. Easter is for everyone. I remember when I was talking with our staff and we were, we were coming up with the title for today and, and I was telling them I wanted to call it Ann Peter. And they said, um, they said, I think we should call it And You. I said, that's the dumbest thing I ever heard. I said, no one's going to get that. And, and they said, no, 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 no. It's really trust us, trust us. So, okay, and everyone was against me. So, you know, you know, the cheese stands alone. So I, you know, I'm smart enough to know that if you're behind the crowd and they're going this way, just get in front and you look like you're leading. And so that's what I did, <laughs> right? And so, so I did. So I got in front and I said, okay, let's go. And you. And sure enough, we put the banner up and I go over to Cup of Joe's and Peter comes up to me, the owner of Cup of Joe's, and says, Pastor Sean, I've had five people ask me, what does this mean? Oh, man. So I said, okay. Well, so I explained to Peter, right? And I tell him why and you means, and, 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 and you is, means that Easter is for everyone. And you. And we got to talk about the resurrection. I thought, man, this is such a waste of my time. I'm kind of busy right now. And, so, and, so, and then, then that whole week, I'm explaining to people, every time someone walks by our office or sees the sign, and you, what does that mean? And so I finally go to my staff. I said, guys, I've been having to explain this whole week. People don't get it. And they're like, isn't that great? I'm like, what do you mean? And they said, Sean, how many times have you explained the resurrection to people this week? I said, about 30 times. Right? How many times do you normally explain the resurrection before Easter to anyone? Uh, well, um, <laughs> once to my grandkids, maybe. Right? I go, okay, I apologize, because you know what? They're absolutely right. And see, this is the point. Easter is for you. Romans says, if you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. You see, God wants to celebrate the truth of his resurrection with you. God wants you to be included in the family of God. God wants you to experience his love. God wants you to experience his power. God wants you to know that you are accepted. God wants you to know that you belong. God wants you to know that Jesus gave his life for you. For you. For you. And that is the good news. And so, you know, we've, we've done this today. I said, any of you notice the sign out there with everyone's signatures on it? How many of you saw that? How many of you just saw cookies? <laughs> How many of you just saw the, the gift bag for the new guests or the flower cross? How many didn't even know there was a sign out there you could sign? Okay, so <laughs> you're honest. That's good. How many of you are on a sugar rush right now? You're not even sure what I'm saying. Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, that's okay. So, so here's the thing. It, it, is that, that here's the thing. We put that out there very specifically with a very intentional purpose. It, it, is we want every one of you to sign that. And, and what are you making? You're making a declaration. You're saying, yes, I believe that Jesus gave his life for me. And you're putting your name on it. I want my name to be counted as part of his family. And so I want to encourage and challenge you just to write your name down. Because when you do, that makes a difference. Because you are making a declaration. You're saying, yes. Yes, Jesus. Yes to your resurrection. Yes, that I get to be a part of it. And so I hope you take advantage of that. We've had a lot of people sign that already. Uh, I will probably take it back to our offices for the whole week. I say that, but I don't know who's going to do that, but somebody will. That's why we have the plain community elves. I don't know. Um, but all the workers are going, thanks, Sean. That's really great. And you. And you. <laughs> 
<laughs> well played. Okay. <laughs> see, but here's the hard part now. You see, this isn't the end of the story, right? In fact, what comes next is the hardest part. And we see this isn't going to be easy because listen to what happens next. Because you know, see, there are four accounts of Jesus' life, right? And the other accounts, they're, they're, it ends with these flowery declarations and proclamations and challenges. And this one ends in a whole different way in the Gospel of Mark. It says this next it says, Trembling and bewildered, the women went out and fled from the tomb. They said nothing to anyone because they were afraid. Well, why were they afraid? Because this changes the whole thing. I mean, it's one thing to follow a good teacher. It's one thing to follow a person who seems to have some gifts of healing. It's one thing to go and feed people and and, and help Jesus out and be a part of this Palm Sunday and the celebration, and that's all good. But now we're in uncharted territory, right? No one, except for Lazarus, no one has risen from the dead. And certainly not by his own power. Lazarus cheated, he did by the power of Jesus, right? And now, now <laughs> cheated wasn't the word, but, um, but now, be, before Easter, it was one thing. This is different because God is alive and present in Jesus, and nothing they did accompl- uh, accounts for this. Nothing we do accounts for this. They were not in charge. We are not in charge. They were not in control. We are not in control. I love what Eugene Peterson says about it. He says, resurrection turns the tables. No longer am I doing something for God. He is doing something for me. No longer am I drawn by my needs to God. He is drawn by his compassion to me. Whether I'm ready for him or not, whether I feel anything for him or not, that means you and I are not in charge. He is. That means you and I are coming to God. He is coming to us. Say that, let me say that again. He is coming to us. We don't expect that. We never expect that. And like the women at Christ's tomb, we are bewildered, for it means the end of one way of life in which we know where we stand and the beginning of another in which we don't know what will happen next. You see, um, we're all here on Easter. But my prayer is that I'll see you next week and the week after. Because now we're going into uncharted territory. And for you, this is something that's uncharted, right? Because to give your life control to another person is something entirely new for a lot of us. They say, okay, Jesus, I want you to take the lead. Jesus said, follow me. Jesus, I want to follow you. And there will be good days and there will be hard days. And see, here's the thing. For Peter, for Peter, this was a mixed bag. Because when Jesus rose, Peter not only had to deal with regret, he had to deal with forgiveness. He had to deal with the fact is that in spite of his messing it up, God still not only wanted him but loved him. And I think for us, it's a similar story. God wants us to be a part of his family. God wants us to know him. God wants us to walk with him every day. This is for you. This is for you and for me and for all of us. And, and, and so now we, we get to the heart part. Oh, it will get easier. Because once you make that decision, every time you say yes again and again, it gets a little easier until there's really no question about what you must do. And that's why we're here. I mean, I love the music this morning. But you need to know that the people who sang this are people that have been changed by the power of God. That's why that music was so good today. Yeah. And I got to wonder, I got to wonder, what is it that God wants to do through you that you didn't think you could do? You see, this is what Easter unleashes, the power of God. Christ risen from the grave. Hallelujah.